All right, mic check, mic check. Uh, let's see. Mic check. Beautiful. Hello, hello. Is anybody watching the stream? That's a good joint. We'll go with that. So I'm going to wrap around it. I'm actually going to double check that my flight controller is going to fit happily on top of the ESC. I've already got uh, the other side wires all put on. So we'll see how this works out. A wire boy to the front. Let's see. I have a feeling. Oh yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see the space between my flight controller and my ESC. Lots of room. This is a great frame, so easy to build on, I've found so far. All right, we'll pop that guy over there. But this frame is so nice and easy. It, uh, I didn't have to put the frame together itself, but uh, that's okay. The Mac DAC, look him up. He's got the whole instructions for that, but... Uh, the wiring is easy, and there's a place for a 2020 in the front and a 2020 in the back and a 3030. And I believe there's mounts for a 2020 in the middle, too. So you can use whatever flight control you want on there. And let's measure this one up. Let's see if I shove my fucking head in the way here. Let's just get that wire. I like to make it neat and tidy as I can. Let's just get those wires right next to each other. Get the flush cutters. And right there is where we want it. Clip. Using white cable because I think it looks cool, basically. There we go. I'll add a little bit of flux onto that guy. It always helps. Where'd I put my solder? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Kester solder. Kester is the way to go when it comes to solder. Give it a tip a little clean, make sure it's shiny. And then we'll just flow a little bit onto the tip of the soldering iron. That will heat up the wire itself. And then all over the wire. There we go. Beautiful. And these little guys, clip, clip. I'm using what is this 18 gauge? 18 gauge wire. I had to extend my motor wire, so I'm using 18 gauge for that because that's what I have around. Make sure it looks nice and neat. I gotta grab more towards the tip. And make sure I have lots of flux everywhere. Flux everywhere. Flux makes soldering 10 times easier. Push that down. Give it a little more right to the tip of the tweezers. There we are. Push it down a little more. Clean the soldering iron tip and get on the hot part of the iron. Place it down. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful shiny solder drain. I don't know if you guys can see that. But those are shiny, shiny solder joints. All right, now I move on to the next one. Like I said, I'm trying to do it as neat and tidy as I can. I know it ain't going to be perfect. All right. Grab that, lay it down. 
can see my hands right in the way, but what I'm doing is I'm sticking the wires together so they look nice and neat. Holding right where it's going to go on, I'm trimming the wire just a slight tad past that, like a millimeter past that. Like that. And uh, you got to be a little janky. You got to get the thumbnail in and look at that. Nice and stripped wire. Actually, that's not quite down far enough. So there we go. That's beautiful. That's exactly what we want right there. And of course, add a little flex. I'm just sticking between the standoff and the uh, stack screw just to uh, hold it in place for me. I do have a little bit of tip tinner I use if my tip ever gets nasty. Go in and add our solder to transfer the heat. There we go. That's a nicely thin wire right there. Now we'll grab our tweezers again. Make sure that it's right at the end of the tweezers, right on the end of the wire. And go down a touch so I can put some pressure down. And whoop, almost forgot an important step. Flux the shit out of it. That's how you get them nice shiny solder joints. And we'll get down to the hot part of the iron, let that melt into the pad. Bam. Beautiful solder joint. I'm running my iron at uh, 420 degrees Celsius. I don't know if on the course getting caught. It's a shitty soldering iron, but it gets the job done. There we go. Uh, let's see. And I hit up Marcel, Marcel Robert. Maybe he'll jump on in a sec. We'll see. Okay, so there is two motors fully wired up. You can see how that looks. Nice and clean, just the way I like it. There we go. Let's get just some of the shit here. Put in my fucking wire pile. Let me just hit up on Facebook too. Okay. I don't know where my camera battery's at right now. Or my uh, I'm using a cell phone. Ooh. I started by ding. Uh, it was just my Facebook, no worries. So I got all these dangly fucks. So what I do personally is Oh, what's he got to say now? Eyes up flying. <laughs> Okay, I need to find my electrical tape. Um, where the fuck did I put my electrical tape? Uh, let's see. Well, this is problematic. Um, where the fuck is my electrical tape? Oh, I know it's around somewhere. This is what happens when I clean up my fucking mess. I don't know where I put anything. Uh, shit. Who knows where that electrical tape has gone? Uh, well, this is now turned into an electrical tape finding stream, and I will be right back. We got the electrical tape. So 
So what I do personally with my wires, everybody's all different. I like to, uh, what is a fresh roll? I like to tape all my wires down, all the way down the arm of the drone. So this guy's going to be the next one. So I'll take them, put the wires together nice. Make sure everything's all happy. Grab our small electrical tape. Stick it to the bottom of the arm and around once. And keep some tension on it, keep it a nice clean wrap. Get the XT60 out of the way. Nice clean wrap. All the way around. There we go. It's a little tricky when you get towards the body of the quad. And bring it around one more time. And that's perfect. This is the only thing I got to snip shit with right now. So we're going to use them. Snip. Oh. And it comes right off. Beautiful. There we go. I got another. So you can see that is where we're looking right there. Electrical tape, electrical tape right up the arm. And we're going to take that wire, move it there, and that wire, move it there. Just so they're out of the way. I think I'm going to actually run the wire around the rear stand off. Before I do that, I'm going to do a fitment check. I'm just going to lay these down around as if they're going to be going the same route. I might have been using the uh, TBS Unify Pro 32 HV, the big beast. And that still fits wonderfully. Okay. And move these guys back over there. I don't want to be tight around the standoff, but I want it to be fairly, fairly taut. Clip that guy. That looks like it's going to be perfect. Before I go and solder it on, I'm of course going to move my little rubber O-ring, silicone O-ring soft mounts. I soft mount the shit out of everything. I mainly use them as spacers, to be honest, but the less vibration going through the stack, the better. Yoink. That will do. Let me refocus this camera. That might be a little better. I don't know. I could be wrong. Bring it around there. I'm definitely going to need the tweezers to get that in, but I'm going to tin this guy first. Again, a little bit of flux. Clean the tip. Clean better now. There we go. And come in. Get the wire. Add flux to the tip of the soldering iron, not the wire itself. That's going to transfer the heat to the wire so you can get a good tin on the wire. And after I get that, a little flux to the pad, more flux to the wire. And grab my tweezers. Bring it around, push it down, clean the tip, and make sure it's angled down so we can put some pressure down on it. Again, hot part of the iron, not the very tip, the hot part. And that's not a very good joint. It happens. Add some more flux to that. Might even need a little more solder, we'll see. Actually, I'm gonna use a little tip tinner. There we go. And try that again. There we go. 
That's what we're after. And that is a nice shiny solder joint as well. I see a little test in it. There we go. All right. So there's first wire that one we're on. Looking excellent. There we go. We can see that. Nicely done. We'll grab the next wire in the bunch. And I'm just going to make sure the length is right. Let me grab the flush cutters. Flush cutters or flesh cutters depends on what you accidentally snip. Chop that. These are little thumbnail wire strippers. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Who says you need to spend money on tools? <laughs> what well, helps? And I think I'm actually going to grab the helping hand and hold this in place. I don't want to have the I don't want to have the wire pointed up like that because when I add the solder, I feel like anyways it's going to float down into the jacketing and make it uh, hard to bend around the tip. Again, a bit of flux on the end. Take my soldering iron tip and just going to add the solder again to the soldering iron. You can slide it right onto the tip. A little bit of that onto the wire, and that is good. Nice guy can go away. All right. I currently have zero people watching. That's okay. Oh, it slipped. I gotta grab it with the very tip. With the tweezers, make sure it wraps around the other wire nicely. Uh, I almost forgot. Flux the shit out of it. Always flux the shit out of it after shiny, shiny solder joints. I'm going to push down on that. That's not good. There we go. That's a nice solder joint. We'll go with that. Not my finest, but uh, it's not cold solder. That's looking good. You can kind of see what I mean. I don't know if you can see on this camera, but you strip off the wires right, right near the tip, right near the tip of the wire. You don't want too much at all sticking out, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Stick that down. Let me just get these wires sorted. It's not going to be the prettiest in the back, but there's also not much room in the back to work with. That's not just this frame. That's with any frame in general, especially when you get the capacitor in there and everything else going on right at the back. It, it limits the amount of room you got to work with. This one, I'm going to do another snip right at the edge of the PCB. Check on my excess wire, my excess wire pile. And again, twist the wire in my thumbnail, and bam, perfect. That's beautiful. I'm gonna grab that guy. We're gonna throw a little flex on it. And clean that up. Uh, I need a little tin on that tip. That's better. And there we go. Since it's all flexed up, I got a clean tip on the soldering iron at a, some people would call it an unreasonably high temperature on the iron, but I like to have it on there for the least time as possible so it doesn't heat soak. The PCB I found if I'm at a lower temperature, personally for me, this is completely my own opinion. But if you're too low of a temperature, you tend to heat soak the PCB, and that's how you get damaged components. And now we'll get a little more flux on her. There we go. 
clean water dip. And press down on the hot part. We've got melting right to the pad, and bam, that's a beautiful solder pad. I don't think I've ever done it better. There we go. Now I've got three, oops, three out of four motors on, and the wires are pretty well flush with the uh, ESC, so they're going to fit underneath the flight controller nicely. I feel like if motor wires are touching the uh, flight controller, that can transfer vibrations, and that's not what we want. Let's move all this crap over here. Slide these soft mounts down first. I just take take my tweezers. And I just push them down. Oh, I pulled the bolt through. Them. Pull that up. Push those down. There we go. And that little guy can go there. Do the same. Lifting up these soft mounts just to get them out of the way to make life easier. There we go. Start with our first. Pardon me, I missed a step again. I need to electrical tape these down. Where is the end of the electrical tape? There it is. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Usually I do this like with the drone holding it against me, but I'm actually going to do it right now just because it's easier. I don't want to fucking. Flippy dippy in the electrical tape. There we go. And stick that on the bottom of the arm. One wrap, nice and tight to the motor. Make sure our wires are all in order. Keep some tension on the roll of electrical tape. Makes it nice and clean. That's literally just aesthetics. It has nothing to do with performance. One last wrap. And clippy snippy. And a little snug. And there we go. That one's all electrical tape now, too. All right. So we're going to pull these through two wires over there. There's the first one. It's going to wrap around and end up right there. And we're going to flush cut that. Pretty much with the end of the PCB, the edge of it, I should say. Click, there we go. All these extra wires, look at all my wires. <laughs> all right, again, scored around and yank. Look at that, perfect length again. And a little flux. I definitely need a little tip tuner on the soldering iron again. And we're going to put that under there. And I don't know if anyone watching can actually see what I'm doing in detail when I'm soldering, but I'm touching the wire to not the tip, just below that in the hottest part. And that transfers the heat a lot quicker. And you don't get the uh, solder flowing down into the insulation on the wire because then you can't bend the tip of the wire into place nicely and it uh, makes life a lot more difficult. So we're going to make sure we get that in place nice, make sure it's on the tip of the tweezers. And again, grab some more flux. Coat that solder pad with flux, coat the wire with flux. So we get it down. No, it's not clean. There we go. There we go. And now we're going to add pressure to the wire again in the hot part of the soldering iron. Hold it there for a second. I like to slide it off so I can see what's going on. That wasn't exactly perfect, right straight. So I'm going to go back and fix that. One more flex. I get a good grip on that. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Oh shit. Now I can't see what I'm doing. I'm bad at this whole streaming thing. Grab some more tip tuner. So I got lots. 
And oh, that's coming right off. There we go. That's a nice solder joint. That'll be good. Not the cleanest, but it's not cold solder. It's making a good connection. So we'll go with that. There we go. I say we've all got different techniques in the way we solder and do all that, but this is what works for me, and it works well. Push cutters again, get that to length. Little extra and chop. There we go. Grab the end of the wire, score it, and pop it off. There we go. I can just clip it right into the little piece of the back. This TPU mount in the back for your uh, SMA actually comes with the camera butter cinnamon and uh, kit, as well as your TPU camera mounts. All comes with the kit, and I believe Paul is making some longer camera mounts to bring the camera further back to keep it a little more protected, too. But regardless, add uh, some flux to that boy. Not a wiry boy. Clean that off. And again, solder the iron tip and then onto the wire. Beautiful. Apparently, I don't have feeling in my fingers, so it's not burning me. Clamp it hard. Oh, my hands are so in the way of this. I gotta get a better camera setup if I'm gonna do this again. I'm almost at the flux. Get the flux all over everything. Make sure we can hold that down good. And the tip is still fairly clean, so we're just gonna go with that. There's another beautiful solder joint. Hold it for a sec, let it cool down. And put your tweezers out. There is only one wire left to do. Would you look at that? All right, let's drag this guy around. Again, make sure it's a good length. It's not getting in the way of anything. It's not getting in the way of itself. It's not overlapping the other wire. And once I get it into place nicely, give it a cut hair extra. Clip that. Again, thumbnail strippers. Bam, perfect length again. Can't be perfect, gotta be a little janky with it. Again, we'll clean the tip. We've got some flux on the wire end. Put it underneath, add the solder. Oh, well, that didn't work so well. There we go, that'll be better. Let me stick that under there, add a little solder, it'll flow right onto it, and bang. Noisy. Nice and. Slipping on my tweezers. And of course, all the flux on the wire tip and the solder pad. Clean the tip. Got lots of shiny, shiny tip on a soldering iron. And make sure that it holds it right against it. There we go. Get that heat. A little bit of pressure, just a touch, not too much. That's a beautiful solder joint right there as well. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Anybody can do this shit. If an idiot like me can put this together, anybody can. Now I'm going to double check my VTX will fit in there. Yep, that fits nicely. Now you can see VTX will fit right in behind it. Now I have a 
think I'm just going to zap strap that VTX in for the uh, Unified Pro 32 HVs. You really want to have them sitting against the carbon plate rather than on double sided tape because that's how they transfer the heat. The carbon plate on the bottom of the quad will act like a heat sink, especially around at, at uh, max wattage. I think they do like 1.8 or something like that milliwatt output. So it's like 1.8, pardon me, 1.8 watt output, 1800 milliamp. Milliamp, fuck, milliwatt. I have too many beer today. Oh, what did I do with my solder? There we go. Okay, so there's our motors wired up. That's neat. And we're going to slide these little rubber soft mount boys back down. Pull up all of our mounts. There we go. Sliding screws. And grab our flight controller, stick that down on there. And there's still an acre of room between any motor wires and the flight controller. That's nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Whew. Well, I suppose it's time to wire my other shit up. So this flight controller actually pulled out of a big old, what the hell do you call those? A TBS Disco clone. I pulled a bunch of parts from that to put in here. All right. So now let's see where we want to put the receiver, which... Um, I'm at receiver got wired wrong for smart audio. Do I want to fix that? Hmm. Not particularly, but I should do it now, shouldn't I? You know what? I'm gonna go have a smoke about it. And I think. And where's our piece of paper? And where's our sharpie? see on the screen when I do this. Can anybody see that? Yeah, it's backwards. I'll type it in too.
Space. Perfect. And there we go. And we're back. That was a good dirt break. Okay. So I definitely need to rewire my uh, TBS Nano RX for smart audio. So I'm going to Google it. TBS. Thanks. And images. Uh, Crossfire Nanoware X. That's not smart audio. Ah, uh, here we are. And green and white. Green and white. Let's go to size green on the closer one. And white is the one I've got wired around, so I cut this open. I'm gonna use my flush cutters just because it's what I got handy. I hope I don't stab my finger. Hope I don't knock anything off the board. Ah, that didn't work well. Snip, snip, snip. There we go. Unless he drinks a bitch. This tea drink really is a bitch. This is the good stuff though. Pull it up. Really the easiest way is to take an exacto along the edge of it and bust it open, but I don't know where my exacto knife is. I think I took it camping or something and left it somewhere. Okay, peel that. We're almost there. There we go. And I'm going to grab my little help hand if it doesn't fall down on my keyboard. I'm going to undo the white wire. Move that white wire over to the right of the green. Uh, sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I just unsoldered it. I'll clean up the tip of the wire so I can get through the through hole. No flux on there. No flux on the nano RX. And I'm going to stick that nano RX wire right through the through hole. There we go. Now these can be a little bit tricky to get solder on nicely, so right in there, try and heat it up, try and get heat transfer down into it, if you have a solder stick, there we go, still not good, get on there, get on there, there we go, let's make sure that's happy, that ain't going anywhere. Beauty. And, oh boy, I've got the antenna on now. You need to trink it. Mm. So everybody's always complaining how these UFLs rip off. So what we do, as you guys can see, this is the TBS NanoRx with a little bit of goop on there to hold the antenna on. Twist it one way, twist it the other way. Keep twisting it, keep twisting it. We've broken that. Broken the goop off. And we just gotta pull it up. This is the hard part is to pull it up without pulling it on an angle. So that's what wrecks on. Let's get this guy out of the way. And there we go. See, just like that. Everybody's all wondering why it uh, is a pain to come off, but it isn't. Before doing anything else, let's talk a little bit more about this frame. So the camera butter frame. It's got the option of five inch and I believe seven inch arms. The bottom 
is wild. There's this curving piece in the middle that locks all the arms together, extremely rigid. This is one of the most rigid frames I've seen, I gotta say, and it's fairly lightweight. It's very, very well designed. A very well designed frame, I gotta say. And my camera is looking at my computer. Ah, come on. There we go. Stay. Stay. One of the best design frames I've seen, anyways. The other one that I've got, my other main quad, is our Chameleon TI. This is my basher. It is heavy, hefty, hefty. Especially with that uh, titanium piece on the front. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the camera body frame. All right, so now I need to get some heat shrink. I don't know if I have any other TDS heat shrink. Let me check. Because uh, it does work very well. Oh, we're gonna open up our TDS parts box. And I do have another piece right here. Excellent. And we'll pull that out. And is anybody in our live stream? Nope. That's okay. We're still going to do it. I'll take my big scissors and I'm going to make sure it's slightly longer than. Clip it that slightly longer than. Get another piece for later. This stuff is super rigid. Like super rigid. I actually might need to stick my tweezers in there to expand it. So I can get it over the nano RX. And there we go. I'm going to pull it right through because we don't want to forget to put our antenna on first. And we'll stick our antenna on just like so. With a click, that's on. Put that straight at the end and torch it. This is satisfying. Look at it shrink on there. Well, unfortunately, that didn't work as well as I wanted it to. And the edge tore. So I'm just going to take a little piece of schmeric to grip tape and cut it. And I'm going to wrap it with that as well just to be safe. So I don't want it to short out on anything on the carbon because as we all know, the carbon is conductive. I'll do a couple of wraps of that. Yeah, I messed that one up a little too much heat from that torch. That uh, TBS stuff does not like too much heat. There you go, so that's our, this is our GPS wire over here. It can live there, camera wire can live there. Right up there, and now uh, where is it? Where's my Pro 32 HV? I'm going to slip it underneath all this sheet. There we go, sits nicely. I've got my plug for it, I'll run through the inside of the standoffs. It should reach just fine, at least I'm hoping. Yes, it will. Plug that in. And that is what we like to see right there. And then I've got this jumble of wire. I may just shorten that as well. And plug, let's just hold off and plug in the EFL. And I'm actually going to zap strap my RX on top of the Core 32 HV and this XT60 lead. I was thinking of running it through this side. So I'm gonna pull it through there. Planning ahead when you're building is always good. That's an excessive amount of wire there. Yeah, do I wanna just jumble that out of the way? I can always just tuck that. It never hurts to have extra wire. Tuck that and hide it right under the capacitor. Look at that, like nobody even knows it's there. Beautiful. I am going to plug in the UFL just so we can test everything. I don't want to uh, 
Sorry, I put that up plugged in. You know what? I think that'll be just fine like that. Yeah, I like that. Now let's see if everything explodes and makes smoke when I plug the XT60 in. There it goes. Well, I didn't do anything because I didn't have my, uh, I'm a dick. I didn't plug the flight controller into the ESC yet. And that's going to be a pain in the butt now. Oh boy. Learn from my mistakes. Do not make the same ones. And oh, this sucks. Hold that. Slide it into the socket. There we go. Each side, you gotta push it in. Get both prongs of the tweezers and push on either side. That's it. Okay, now let's see what happens. Oh, would you look at that? Everything fires up. I can see the Nano RX is on. It's already bound to my transmitter. Either way, it can be done easy enough. And VTX is flashing away. Perfect. Perfect. And now, let's tuck our wires. Oh, nice like I could have done it cleaner, but uh, I didn't feel like having to redo that many solder joints. In the name of clean wireness. Make sure this guy's on the side. It's not hurting nothing. Beautiful. I use that strap, which um, I'm not sure if I have one right now, to be honest. Let me go through. Uh, there. Got this whole stack of little trays and things. Normally there is less straps in. But there is not today. There's one other place I know to check there that might be. Uh, hmm. This is the predicament. I might be out of zap straps and I might have to finish this another time. Mm -hmm. Let me check in my flight bag. Usually there's one or two in here, but there might not be because I might have used them all. Well, that is an issue. I used up all my zap straps, I think. Uh, I need more. Oh, I lied. Found one. Bigger, chunkier fuck than I wanted, but. Uh, I suppose that's just the way she goes. There's a hole on the bottom of the frame. I'm gonna send it up through. See it coming out. There we go. Now I'm gonna bring it up until the other end is just under the back of the quad. I'm gonna send it up over top of the wires on the RX. Back in there. That's satisfying the zap strap sound. Before I tighten it, make sure everything's positioned well. And the wires are all tucked under the zap strap that need to be under it. Just to keep them tidy and out of the way. As tidy as it gets on a jank build. And that's toy. That's happy. Let's hold both of those in nicely. Oh, I like that. I think I'm just going to run to the back arm. I know it should be going to the front arm. But uh, I didn't feel like having to redo all my wiring to move it over there. So this will do for now. Okay, so that's there. And do I have a couple more? 
more zap straps. Do I have more than one extra? Where the hell do I even find those? Oh, right here. It's one. Apparently there's just one. So we've only got one spirit zap strap. So I'm not gonna worry about that not onto the but I'd like to connect it to Betaflight, but I don't know where my USB cable is either. Is that something? Yeah, some USB cables work with Betaflight connecting your quad, but some do not. Some are data cables, some aren't. This one may be a data cable, it may be a transfer cable. You can't tell by looking at it. So we're firing up Betaflight. Oh, what can I plug in to plug this in? Oh, no. On my USB phone. I don't need that one. We'll plug that in there. And we'll plug that in there. Connect. Connecting up COM6. Oh boy, I got so many things plugged in. COM4. No, COM5. Um, this may not be the proper cable, so I might have to do that later. But what I can do in the meantime, just to make sure everything's at least working and spinning, is grab my transmitter. Uh, pardon the sound, it might be loud. And I've got the good old jumper T16 with our crossfire. Get that on, I'm on the right quad. And we'll plug it in. It has connected, I see my LQ. We have a motor spin. That works, would you look at that? Beeper works. Let's see if turtle mode works. I don't think I had turn mode set up on this one, but it works. Receiver still connected. I know, I know. Shush. There we go. And I think my phone just died, which means the video is frozen. <laughs> That's unfortunate, but regardless. I am going to end the stream here because that's basically all I had to do to get this build all in order. And that's a little info on the camera butter cinema live frame. So everyone have an excellent day and uh, hopefully I'll see you on soon.